Welcome to a quick video explaining how to tell whether the output of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions are positive or negative depending on what quadrant you're in. At this point in the class, it might not even be obvious why you need to know this, but perhaps I wanted to say I'm looking at a quadrant where sine is positive and cosine is negative. Which quadrant am I in? Uh, you can make a long video labeling sides of triangles and make sense of why it happens, and eventually I'll do that. But right now I just want to show you a way to know the result uh, of that video. So what I was taught in my trick class, first of all, how to label the quadrants, is you start in the upper right-hand corner, we call that quadrant one, and we label these with Roman numerals. Going counterclockwise, this would be quadrant two. Uh, continuing counterclockwise, this would be quadrant three. And again, we're using Roman numerals. And then finally, this would be quadrant four. So in another video, I'll show you why this turns out. But right now, I just want to show you a quick way to memorize. It turns out that all three trig functions are positive if your reference angle is in the first quadrant. So uh, I was taught as a boy to remember the, uh, the sentence, all students take calculus. So uh, here's my A for all. And then you, just like we labeled the quadrants, we go counterclockwise, all students take uh, calculus. So the all students take calculus allows you to label this quadrant A, this one S, this one T, and this one C. And what I've done here is these letters represent which trig functions are positive. If you know which ones are positive, then you know which ones come out to be negative. So the A in all students take calculus mean that all three trig functions turn out to be positive. So the sine, the output of the sine would be positive, the output of the cosine would be positive, and the output of the tangent would be uh, positive. All three are positive. So in another video, I'll show you what happens in quadrant two, where it turns out only the sine is positive, and I know that because of the S in all student state calculus. The S stands for sine. Again, these are telling you which ones are positive, and if you know which one's positive, you know which of the other two are negative. So in this quadrant, since I have an S here for students, all students take calculus, that means the sine is positive, so by default, that means the other two, if you were to take the cosine of an angle in the second quadrant or the tangent of an angle in the second quadrant, they would come out to be a negative uh, number. Uh, so in the third quadrant, for example, since you have the T and all students take calculus, the T stands for the tangent function. That means the tangent will be positive, meaning then that the sine and cosine will come out to be negative. And what I mean by that is the output. So if you take the sine of any angle, at that the angle terminates in the third quadrant, I guarantee the output comes out to be negative. Uh, finally, in the fourth quadrant, we have C here. All students take calculus. The C that we get from the word calculus means that the cosine function is positive in quadrant four, meaning that the sine and the tangent must be negative. So there'll be some problems where we might give you an example where we give you that the cosine is 3 sevenths or so, say, and that means that it's positive. Maybe the cosine of my angle is 3 sevenths. That's a positive number. 3 sevenths is positive. But I want you to know that we're also in a quadrant where the sine is negative. So if the cosine was positive and the sine was negative, you would know you were in quadrant 4. Whereas if I said the sine and cosine are both positive, then you would know we're working with a reference angle in quadrant uh, 1. So at this point in the class, you may not know why it's important to know this, <laughs> but trust me, there'll be questions on MathAS and uh, questions on the exams and the proctored exams and the online version of this class where you need to know what the outputs of the trig functions are going to be in terms of their sign, S-I-G-N, positive or negative, uh, depending on what quadrant you're in. So hopefully this video helps you memorize the result. doesn't help you understand why they come out that way, but that's just the memorization of the result um, of the signs of the trick function.